Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Hello, and welcome to my podcast. Today is April 9th, the day just after the eclipse that really affected people all over America, which is so exciting. In the Northwest here, it was very foggy and rainy. I did feel the temperature drop and uh, saw the cloud cover get a little bit dark. That was kind of the extent of my experience, but we were able to witness other people around the country who had phenomenal experiences um, I, a lot of people in Texas and, of course, um, throughout the Midwest, really cool experiences with the eclipse. So congratulations. And now that we're, you know, even further deep entrenched in the eclipse energy, this is the time to really use your voice and your energy to communicate to creation what you really, 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 really want. So what I like to do at this time is to give a lot of gratitude. And my favorite prayer right now is thank you universe for assisting me in manifesting incredible things that I truly desire. So you want to be direct with the universe. The universe is very direct. It doesn't mix words. And when you pray, you want to have a thankful perception about it. Because the universe already sees that everything's been done. Everything's been created. You are truly a magnificent being beyond anything you could possibly imagine. So you have really everything that you could possibly desire. We that live here in the physical realm are working on our perceptions, which in my opinion are related to old past life wounds. Um, but as soon as we shift our perceptions, then we get to have a different experience. So maybe try this manifesting prayer that I just repeated. Uh, now that we're, you know, deeply entrenched in eclipse energy. And I would pay attention to what occurs in the next six months. A lot of astrologers believe eclipse energy affects us six months before and six months after. I really believe we're in a, a really a month window, two weeks before, two weeks after is really the intensity. However, it's great to take inventory right around six months to see, ooh, what perceptions have changed? What's shifted in my life? Um, how am I doing in that prayer with manifesting or things really making a significant change for me? I think that would be critical. And, and before we go to our phone lines, which are actually voicemails that people have graciously left me, questions that I love to answer people's questions. I've worked as a professional energy healer, really, but psychic for over 25 years. I've had clients around the world um, I used to see 25 people a week for a very long period of time. I just stopped that maybe five years ago. Now I'm down to a much smaller number because I love to teach and do podcasts and other incredible things like that. So I've had a lot of experience. I've heard, at least I believe, just about every question or any question that someone could ask me from every disease process, relationship issue. I've heard it all. Now, when you leave your voicemail, try to keep it to one question, please. I'd like to get through as many of these as possible. Um, this is my way of giving back um, because I love what I do so much. And I'm, you know, a lot of successful professional psychics, we have long waiting lists. Um, we're doing our best to train as many people in the art so that there can be more people in the world to provide healings and mediumship and psychic awareness, which really means connecting with your higher self and giving you information that comes from a higher vibration than the physical realm. That's really what that means. There are answers to every, every problem that a human perceives that they have. And when you get psychic answers, you get higher vibrational solutions that actually really, 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 really work. Um, but before I go to these gracious questions that people leave me. You get a free self-hypnosis um, when you sign up for this. And we have a lot of them, so I'm doing my best to get through them. So thank you for being patient as well. I wanted to share a technique because I know there are people out there who listen to this podcast who want to become healers or work in the psychic realm. Um, 
I started off as an energy worker, but quickly became a medium within two years of my practice. And I do it all. I'm one of those one-stop wonders. So I'm kind of a fan of maybe not pigeonholing ourselves into one area of multisensory abilities. But of course, if that's what sings to you in your heart, then that's the best way to go. I think it's good to do multiple things. So I'm just going to share a tip that I used for years and years and years in my private practice when I was seeing 25 people a week. And that's, of course, teaching a little bit as well and writing at that time. But I used to draw out people's energy. And I think that's really helpful, especially if you don't have a lot of time. So, you know, I would have to see people pretty, you know, and I'd, I'd get out, have some food, talk to my assistant. Um, and now my children are all in their 30s, so I don't take care of them like I used to. Um, so I, I was a very busy person for a really long time in that way. But I would draw out the person's energy. So I'm going to do that today. Um, I'm just going to show you a sample of what it looks like. So I just have paper and a pen. I happen to have lined paper today. I usually don't have that. But I do it pretty quick. Uh, because I don't want my mind to get involved. I want my intuition to be involved. So for me, and you don't have to do it like me, um, perhaps uh, you're going to be helping a family member or yourself. Maybe you have a physical need for your physical body or you want to help a family member or a friend and you're going to draw up their energy and see what intuition comes to you. Uh, I like to go in cold, so my assistants do not give me information about clients ahead of time. Of course, these days, people know how to find me on Instagram and Facebook. So sometimes when I get uh, aligned with someone, after they say a few words, I'm like, oh, I remember your story because you wrote to me on Instagram. But typically, I have no idea why a client is coming to me. I'm the type of person I, I do very well cold. Um, so... I draw it out pretty quick. I, I'm a stick person, so I draw a stick person. And then I'm going to draw the chakras. And then I'm going to draw arrows to show if energy is, you know, patently moving into the vortex or leaking. Now, the beautiful thing about the chakras, and you can find more information, I'm sure, in lots of books, but my book, Intuitive Self-Healing, even has a graph of what diseases are connected to what chakra, what health issues. Um, and of course, I talk about that <clears throat> throughout the entire book. Every chapter is dedicated to health issues that are affected by a particular chakra. So if you have a health issue going on, intuitive self-healing could be really effective for you where you could, you know, look up the chakra and find out, oh, my pancreatitis is associated with the third chakra. Ooh, what do I need to do? There's exercises and tools. But what's most important about energy medicine is the emotional component. Every chakra has a powerful emotion within it. And if we align to that emotion in a healthy way, then we start absorbing energy into that chakra, then that starts to feed the physical form. So um, I'm just gonna make my stick person. So you can, that's my stick person. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. And now I'm gonna make the chakras. I don't have an idea of where to start. In other words, let your intuition guide you. I think that's important. But if you want to be a rule follower, then you could start at the first chakra and move up. I'm going to start at the crown today. I don't know why. I don't even have anyone in mind. Um, so I'm drawing out the crown. Um, and chakras to me look like cones. So the tip is deep inside the body, like a couple inches. And the seventh vortex is supposed to be very large. It can actually grow hundreds and hundreds, thousands of feet. It can grow past the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, people who are really good channelers like Esther Hicks and um, others um, who have channeled throughout the cosmos, they have huge, enormous crown chakras, enormous. So that's the crown. I'm going to go now to the six. So I'm going down, it looks like. And chakras two through six have a front and a back portion. So here's the sixth chakra. I'm going to make that the front. I'll just make an F by it. And then this is the back. Oh, I guess I did it backwards. Sorry, that's the back portion. I'm going to draw the rest of the chakra system so you can see what it looks like when I draw this out. Okay, so this would be the first chakra, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Um, and each one of these has an emotional component. So if we were talking about pancreatitis, which means an irritation, an inflammation of the pancreas, we don't want that in the pancreas. It's very painful. It's uncomfortable. You have to go to the hospital for a while. The underlying cause for pancreas issues, which could even be insulin need, um, pancreatic cancer, you know, 
anything to do with the pancreas is really about someone doing too much for others. So people who have pancreatic issues are typically doing too much for others. So um, third chakra, but the emotional component for the third chakra is self-love. So you could meet someone who's had some pancreatitis issues who is just very self-critical and really hard on themselves. And then super, 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 super busy. Maybe they work too hard at their job. Maybe they're a parent also. That means that they're a partner. So there could just be too much going on for them and they need to work on their self-love. The interesting thing about the third chakra, which you all know that I talk about self-love, constantly is it it positively will affect lots of organs in your body like the liver um the gallbladder the bile duct there's a lot of organs that are associated to the third chakra along even with all of the hormones in the body the movement of lymphatic fluid so your lymph nodes so, so you cover a lot of territory um when you work on the third chakra so onto our, our little explanation here. After I draw out the energy, then I use this because I do everything online these days. Um, everything, I don't see clients in person any, any longer. My office doesn't even have a massage table in it any longer. It used to. I'm saving that for one of my grandchildren. I think they're gonna follow me in my work. I don't, I'm not sure which one. So it's in the garage. Um, the only massage table I used in my career. <laughs> in the garage waiting for that grandbaby or whoever, whoever, uh, whoever it is. So now you can lay hands on these parts of the body. So let's say you have a family member. Let's say they have sore feet. Just using this as an example. And let's say you don't even know an energy modality um, tool like Reiki is my absolute favorite, but there are many of them um, that are taught throughout the world. If you ever decide to study a energy healing modality, just choose one that makes you really, really happy and choose one that doesn't have a lot of fear involved. I, I think when there's a lot of rules, then we don't allow ourselves to connect to the multisensory world. So for me personally, um, I recommend that people not choose modalities that have a lot of rules within them, but you get to make your own decision. If that makes you happy, then that's the right one for you. So let's say you have someone who has sore feet. So we're going to be working on the first chakra because the feet are connected to the first chakra, everything from the hips down to the toes. So we're just going to warm up our hands and you don't have to know an energy healing modality. It's not necessary. And of course, you've asked this person for permission. They want you to do energy work on them. Just call them on the phone and say, hey, can I just energy work on you? I was watching this podcast from this lady and I know your feet are sore. And so do you mind? I'm sure that 99.9% .9 of everyone will tell you yes, but it's always good to ask permission. And then just put your hand on that first chakra, that cone that's at the bottom. Just put your hand there. Maybe close your eyes. I do Reiki, so I would just do some beautiful um, symbols. But you can imagine light coming in. In fact, as a healer, what you want to do is have a beautiful, perfect, positive experience for yourself. So think of something that makes you happy. You're going to channel more energy into yourself and into that person's feet and stay there as long as it feels good. That could be 10 minutes, could be five. Um, and if you feel drawn to other parts of their body, you can do that as well. Just simply lay their hands or do some of your modality. Anyway, that's an energy healing tip. For those of you who want to help your family or yourself, you can even draw out your own energy and lay hands on it and see what happens. See what happens to your body. Okay, now I'm gonna head to these voicemails that people have graciously left for me. Hola, Marie. Hello, I'm Antonio from Portugal. And this is a Portuguese trying to um, speak in English. So I hope I'm not the only one understanding it. <laughs> So I am a primary uh, school teacher. I have a beautiful second grade class in a Waldorf school. And I'm from this year with 48 years old, I'm decided to become also a painter and a sculptor. Um, that's the two loves of my life, the, the, the school and the arts. So since I was a child, I, I was always very sensitive, 
but I was always also afraid. So I remember at night to say, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, I don't want to hear, I don't, I don't want to hear. And s during so many years, I finally blocked, <laughs> I think. So sometimes when I'm with some parents, with especially with some parents, or when I'm painting, sometimes there's something that wants to come out and I don't know how to be a channel of something that it's good to, to yeah. I think it's important to say to the parents, for instance. Um, so I wonder um, what you have to say or uh, my ancestors, the universe. And if it is my in my mission um, to help the others, uh, how can I unblock this and also to express that in my in my heart, my art, not only my physical heart, but the art, uh, the painting and the sculpture. So thank you so much. Who knows if one day we can be together. <laughs> A big kiss from Portugal. Adios. I thank you, Antonio, a big kiss back to you. And, you know, the Waldorf School is already really woo-woo, at least in the States. It's all about spirit. I'm sure they haven't changed their formula no matter what country it is. Um, so I think when it comes to you, you have to just let it out. And, and you can say, let's say before you go to school, or before you grab a piece of art, that you literally say, thank you, creation, so much for my ability to connect to higher realms of knowledge and to express the highest vibrational expression that I possibly could allow to move through my body. I think that's all you have to do. You already have the energy. You already are incredibly gracious and kind, and unconditional in your love for others. I think you have to give yourself permission to express yourself. And here's part of the reason. I don't think you're the best receiver. And so channeling and creating things requires a lot of subatomic particles, a lot of energy coming into your body. So maybe for five minutes every day, you'll allow yourself to take in light, realize that you are valuable, you are precious, because the universe already sees you that way. When you honor yourself in that way, you're going to raise your frequency and then you're going to, you know, you've said your prayer. Thank you for allowing me to express at my highest level. The very first time I spoke about what I was experiencing in the hospital. I was working on a patient who his daughter was uh, an employee of the hospital and she asked me to work on him. And I saw this vivid movie in my head and I knew this man had experienced trauma at a very early age. And, and I didn't want to say anything. I was too embarrassed. I was uncomfortable. And what I've learned about intuition, if you just start speaking the rest of the story unfolds. It's, it's just this natural thing that occurs. So you don't want to hold anything back. Even if you're not fully sure of what's going to come forward, start speaking. You, you will find your footing. It's kind of like kids who are learning to walk. They have to start walking and then they find their footing. Riding a bike, you have to start riding the bike and then you find your balance. Um, and as I spoke to him, mostly because my guides were actually yelling at me in a very loving way, like, say it, say it, say it. I'd have visions for many months prior to that in the hospital. And sure enough, you know, he had experienced a childhood trauma that, you know, that was the only time he really let me work on him. And he didn't want to work on the trauma at all. He was very um, in denial about it, but his wife knew all about it. It was a major story in his life. And, and he was pain-free for at least six months after just a few minutes of energy work and me sharing the experience that I had. So my advice to you is even when your mind thinks, what the heck, this doesn't make any sense. I want you to start to let the experience roll um, because I think it's just going to gain momentum. And your, your parents are blessed to have you as are your students. And I want you to do this with your work too. Just let it roll. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Don't wait to fully understand things. We don't want the logical mind to actually understand. It, it can't understand intuition or guidance or the arts. Not really. Um, so that's my suggestion to you. Thank you for calling in. Hi, Marie. Thank you so much for taking my question. I'm a first time caller. My name's Karina and I live in upstate New York. And my question is about the root cause of my stomach and gut health. 
over the last couple of years, I've been dealing with an overgrowth of candida and digestion issues that also led to a gnarly bout of eczema. And I wouldn't say I've cured this, but it's gotten much, much better through a gluten-free diet, cutting out some sugar and processed foods. And it's much better, but it's still lingering. So I'm now sitting with the question of what's the emotional root cause of this? I'm feeling a little blocked in getting to the heart of it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and your guidance. Thank you so much. Thank you again. And much, much gratitude. Uh, Thank you, Karina. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Excuse me. And you did the right thing. Gluten-free. No sugar. People who have candida issues, which I had for many, many years, actually. um, Mine was more related to being in an unhealthy marriage. (laughs) Um, But it's about self-love and self-worth. The third chakra, which I talked about early on in this podcast, is all about self-love. So people who get candida and have digestive health, health issues or even like Crohn's disease or diverticulitis, which thankfully you don't have, Um, they do have a fair amount of self-hatred. I know that's a really strong term and you can disagree with me. We could call it self-loathing, but it's not uncommon. I think the majority of of humans on earth self-loathe. I think we're raised to believe that, whether it's from religion and I was raised with zero religion uh, or educational systems or there's just this weird concept throughout the world that we need to be humble. And I think we've taken it too far that you can be humble and love other people and respect them and want the best for others, but you can also have those same feelings for yourself. So self-love is an emotional experience. In other words, like when I love my, my grandchildren or my daughters or my dog, it's an experience for me. Or like right now I'm loving all the flowers outside. Like, oh, I just want to kiss them all and hug them. I, I really do. I just love them. Can you have that experience with yourself? And will you allow yourself to have that experience with yourself every single day? Because every single day you're loving something. So that's the root cause. You can't go back. Sugar isn't good for people anyway. So staying on a sugar-free diet is huge. Maybe, I don't know how extreme you were, you know, because when people are dealing with candida, they have to be very extreme. But my rule is, and of course, like yesterday, I had a treat, but typically I don't eat refined sugar. So I buy food that doesn't have added sugar in it. It doesn't mean I don't have raspberries or blueberries or strawberries or apples. You know, of course, I want to get my antioxidants. So I'm incorporating healthy foods, um, but I don't eat a lot of refined sugar. Think of it as a treat. So fall in love with yourself because then you won't have a lot of health issues regarding overgrowth of anything and then having it move to your skin because that's what happened, right? The candida grew so big in your body because it's normal to have some yeast in the physical form. And then it grew to the top of your skin because the skin is another toxification organ. A lot of toxicity will move through the skin and that's when we get things like eczema or psoriasis psoriasis or rashes or, you know, things of that nature. And I think you should stay gluten-free. I don't think gluten, at least in the U S is healthy for most human beings to consume. It's, it's just not healthy and not you, but a lot of people who eat food that are toxic for them, they don't even know, they don't even have any discomfort. So you're so lucky. I know it's no fun to have discomfort, but at least you knew what was going on in your body. There's scores of humans especially in the United States who eat very unhealthy food and don't feel anything because their body's so numb in the discomfort of their toxicity. So fall in love with you. It will work. That means you'll just stay healthy. You know, you'll stay healthy. You'll be able to eat certain foods that maybe you couldn't eat and sugar isn't good for you. United States wheat, in my opinion, is not good for us. So because they made it a GMO in the 60s, a long time ago. So it's, it's not pure. European wheat, much better, healthier, easier to digest. My body doesn't dislike it. Okay. Thank you for calling. Hello, Marie. My name is Saloa. I'm 48 years old and I live near Barcelona, Spain. Oh, yeah. My question is related to my health. My blood pressure is too high with dizziness and tachycardia. 
I have treated it with natural medicine, mm -hmm. but it did not stabilize and I am on allopathic medication and it does not stabilize either. Mm -hmm. The diastolic pressure is always very high. I cannot get out of bed when it happens because of the tachycardia and the dizziness. I meditate, I work with an emotional healer, my past, uh, the emotions and memories of childhood. I want to know what my body is asking me to attend to. How can I allow my body to heal? And how can I connect with my angels to guide me in healing? I'm really grateful for what you do and I'm looking forward for the answer. Great. Thank you. Big kiss. Kiss back to you too, Zola, if I'm saying your name correctly. I'm so sorry for everything that you've gone through. I'm glad you're on allopathic medicine because you need it right now. And I'm sorry it's not working as well. You've got two things going on. This is why drawing out energy could be so helpful because as you were speaking, I drew out your fourth chakra, which governs um, the movement of blood in your body. It governs the heart as well, all the arteries and the veins, because that's where blood moves in the human form. So this is heart chakra related, but in your case, it's also kidney related. Um, and of course, if we were talking on the radio, you could disagree with me with what I'm about to say. I think you stay in fight or flight. I think you care too much about the human race. And I love Barcelona, by the way, I was there for three days after teaching in the Sierra Nevada mountains in Spain in 2016. Uh, and I went to that Familia church. It was under construction, which I heard it's finally not now, but Barcelona is gorgeous architecture. Food was amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, you live in a beautiful place. So we've got two things going on. You tend to stay in fight or flight. You have to stop worrying about the world and what's happening in your family or internationally or in your community. I want you to stay focused on yourself. And, and I mean, in terms of being happy and fulfilled and not worrying about others. What happened to you, I think what originally increased your blood pressure is the kidneys can actually affect blood pressure, believe it or not. And when people go into fight or flight, that can be a symptom um, where their blood pressure increases. And then on top of it, you have a massive leak in the back of your heart chakra. So, you know, I was drawing out the chakras earlier in this um, podcast. I'm going to just draw what I saw for you. So this is the heart chakra right here, but this is what it looks like in the back. This would be the front portion of it. But, you know, the, the tip of the cone is deep in the mid spine. And then this vortex extends out this chakra is the highest receptivity center in all of the chakras. It's where we take in the most amount of energy. You have a massive leak here. So you're not receiving and you're leaking out your life force. So you don't have a lot of energy and it's really hard to heal when we're leaking life force. So it looks like this to me. Um, these are arrows. They're all pointing away from the vortex. So you're consistently leaking out your life force. I'm going to put down the drawing now. So in order to stop this, that's why I've asked you to stop caring about everyone. Stop thinking about people. Older souls, older soul types have this tendency to um, be very compassionate for the entire world, which is a blessing. It's a beautiful thing. But if it's hurting your body, you're not supposed to be doing it. Older soul types also have to learn self-compassion. So even as I'm speaking right now, and I put my hand on the back of your heart chakra, you're turning around the arrows. You're a good student. You don't like to make mistakes. And I know you're not listening to this live, but believe me, anything can change at any moment. Energy is everything. So you're turning that around. So I want you to get selfish, which this disease process is forcing you to reevaluate your life and what's in your best interest to think outside of the box. I'd love for you to often imagine energy moving into your back. It can look like anything, a million puppies running in, kangaroos, light, sound, just anything that makes you happy, um, that's healthy. Um, so sugar, no, that can't be it. I'm not, I'm just making a joke there. You know, it can't be sugar moving into the back of your heart chakra. And um, that's going to do the trick. That's going to do the trick. So no more worrying about anyone. I, I'm sorry that things happen in the world. 
but you came to earth to learn self-compassion. And as long as you continue to be affected by what's happening in the world, it's, you're not going to be in receptive energy and you need to learn how to receive. Then once your body is filled and your vibration is maintained, then you can do things in the world that are helpful, that bring you joy and don't take you back to fight or flight. Um, so if you have a career path where you're helping a lot of people, I would take a sabbatical until you can figure this out. One of the things that happens for me just naturally, thank goodness. Um, but I have, I've never worked to stop it. I, I was curious about it in the beginning of my career, because I've heard every story you can imagine. I've worked with all kinds of health issues and family issues and, you know, all kinds of tragedies that people have experienced all over the world. It, for some reason, doing so brings me joy to hold space with people during that time in their life. It brings me great joy. But when I'm done with the session or a podcast or a class, I forget about everything that happened, everything, which can be annoying when you're trying to write books about your experiences or you have to do greetings day later. I do greetings for all my classes. And I have to like go back and read all my notes because I, I literally forget. But I think it's the universe gifted me that ability so that I can come back to my personal life, have my own experience and not be affected by things that are happening to others. So I want you to learn to develop that inside your own body. And that means you have to find other things that please you and drive you and realize that everyone is magical. Everyone has guides around them. Everyone is a powerful soul and they're all here for good reasons. And they're all having their experiences for good reasons too. Even if we would never want them to have what, what they're experiencing, there's something important for them that they're learning. Okay. I hope that's helpful. Hi, Marie. I wanted to ask you because I am going through some painful, um, painful loss and, um, uh, a series of strange, unfortunate events, uh, one hitting me harder than the other. And uh, yes, uh, there's that sp spiritual awakening, making me believe more than ever that I'm meant to and supposed to be doing something. However, when I search for uh, the likes of yourself, uh, I, I, I noticed um, it's amazing that all you have this clear vision and knowing exactly what you're meant to do, you're, you're guided uh, along the way and you are, yeah, that it has come to this point. You have the platform, you have a very clear mission and vision in life and you're doing as you were meant to. Whereas I am feeling very lost. I don't even know um, well, which ones exactly, be, uh, you know, I need, I still need guidance with regards to, to the gifts, with regards to developing them and knowing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I am searching and I feel like I'm just chasing my own tail. Mm -hmm. And I would appreciate if you have uh, any guidance for me because I don't, uh, I am not even finding l like um, people like uh, ourselves that I could connect with in geographically where I am at the moment working and um, really I, I do wish I could have it uh, be doing what I'm meant to do spiritually as it will also align with my work uh, that it would be the same as well but um, nothing is so far and I am uh, hoping to to have some guidance I would appreciate it and um, Thank you. And my name is Mariam. Thank you, Mariam. My oldest daughter's name, by the way, beautiful name. She spells it with a Y though. I'm not sure if you do. So I love your question. I think there's you know, a few billion people who have the same question on earth. I didn't always know. I knew one thing when I was quite young that I wanted to have kids. I knew that. In fact, I got married when I was 20, but neither one of us had finished college. And I dropped out of college to put my kid's dad through college. Um, I don't recommend that, by the way. I don't think today's women are like that, which is nice. I think they think of their own needs and their own selves and their own profession. So that's excellent. Um, so I didn't go back to college until I was, you know, 
after my second child was born and we were only going to have two kids. And then an oops occurred, which I, 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 he, you know, luckily he gave me the choice. He goes, you know, uh, you don't have to maintain this pregnancy if you don't want to, but I was looking at our two gorgeous, stunning daughters and knew there was another one in there. And so I had a third child, but long story short, the only thing I knew I really wanted to do was to have kids. And it, it's not a mystery like most people say it is, finding your purpose. And we have multiple purposes, like mine, having children. I mean, the work that I do in the world butts up really close to the love I have and the love that I experienced in raising a family. So close. I mean, like almost neck and neck. I, I love my job so much, but having kids was my greatest joy. Um, it's not complicated, but you're not going to figure it out in the vibration that you're in. It's impossible. You have to get happy. So I had someone write in to me recently through YouTube who said it, something to the effect, I haven't answered them back because honestly, I haven't had time, that it seems like only people who have near-death experiences have this awakening. I've never had a near-death experience. So that's not true. But what is true is when people have a near-death experience, they raise their vibration enormously. And that's how you find out what your purposes are. That's how you find out. In fact, all of us could look at every area of our life. And if there's an area that's not working well, I bet you, whoever, $50,000 or a dollar, that your vibration's low in, in that category. This is true for all of us. So we have to get your vibration up. You have to get happy. Luckily for me, having children made me very happy. It raised my frequency. I adored it. I realized that's when I started to recognize I was intuitive because I just could read my kids. I understood them. Um, I'm a good mom, not perfect, right? Nobody's perfect. And parenting, I think, is one of the hardest jobs on the planet. And I had a very complicated marriage, so that didn't help. But, or it did, you know, my children chose both of us. So I think it all turned out beautifully. In fact, my oldest said something, or my youngest said something to me recently. She said, you know, mom, I think you made a good choice because Bubba, their father, um, he was very loving when they were young, just so cuddly and loving and attentive. He changed over time um, and isn't exactly that way now, which makes our daughters a little sad. But children create their belief systems before the age of five. So to have both of your parents just so adoring and loving and cherishing you is amazing. So that was a lovely comment. I agree with her. And I had agreed for a long time about that statement. So anyway, what I'm trying to tell you, Maryam, is, Maryam, is that you have to get happy. If you can get happy, your vibration is going to increase because your career, your spiritual path, what you want to do in the world is in that frequency. And I know it's so hard when your vibration's low to imagine how you're going to get your frequency up. So one step at a time. Something re really weird happened to me before my psychic ability opened. Now, remember, for those of you who know my story, I went into nursing, which made me incredibly happy incredibly happy. Still to this day, I think about the hospital, my vibration uh, raises any hospital. I drive by any hospital. I, I just, there's something about it probably from previous lifetimes. So you, you don't want to logically try to figure this out. You want to energetically be aware of what brings you joy and then engage in that energy. So I was already nursing, but I'd already had this feeling that I needed to change my career. And it made me kind of sad. You know, I was like so happy. I found something that fulfilled me that I thought was valuable. And I just knew I had this awareness that it was no longer my life path. And I'd only been a nurse for like eight years. I hadn't really spent that much time in the nursing career, but enough time. And so I would pray every morning and I would look in the mirror and say, thank you, creation for assisting me in finding my passion. Um, so I would say that prayer every morning. And then for some weird reason, my children's father and I started buying this really, this is a weird story, but I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter what makes you happy. You just have to get happy and you have to stay in that vibration, that frequency. We started buying this um, vegan kind of soy food. And uh, my kid's dad is an excellent cook. He's amazing. So I was very shocked that 
he found this dehydrated food. We were very excited about it. all of our friends thought we were a little cuckoo for Cocoa Pops because we did tons of dinners and entertaining, you know, lots of people ate at our home over the years. So we're making all this weird food with this vegetarian soy based food. Um, and we were both just really, really happy about it. Not everybody liked the taste of it or the texture, but we were in high frequency. At the same time, I started a manifesting group in my home and people would come to my house. I'm not sure if it was weekly or monthly and we would raise our vibration. So, and that's when everything opened up for me psychically. I mean, it happened while I worked in the hospital, while I was working in the hospital, but all of these things were happening in my life. So you have to get your vibration elevated. You don't need a near death experience um, to get your, your vibration elevated, but you are going to have to work at it. You can't be in low frequency and figure it out. Nobody can. I hope this is helpful. Sorry for this, the long stories and I'm going to go on to the next person. <laughs> Hi, Marie. My name is Holly Engel. So my question is, my guides have been telling me that I will be doing a training at some point this year. That's really going to be a turning point in my career. It's going to be a training of healing through energy. Wondering if you could tap in or somehow find out more details on who is sponsoring this training or the name of the training <laughs> when the training would be. Any information would be greatly appreciated. Holly, you are adorable. You, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. You have to be in your body, have your energy elevated, start looking at different trainings or be open to them. And then the perfect one will show up for you. And it's going to be a feeling, not where it's at, when it's going to be none of those things. It has to be a feeling, a feeling. So be, be open. Uh, the universe is just going to deliver it to you. The universe wants you to learn this way because it wants you to start appreciating how actually things happen that are in our highest good. They don't come from planning or research or searching all over the globe for things. They come from us being in alignment, being in high frequency and waiting for the experience to come to us. When I was a nurse and I started doing energy work, I'm like, I've got to learn something here. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was laying hands on people. I taught myself. I'm a self-taught healer. And I thought, oh gosh, I probably need to go to um, one of the healing practices. I can't remember the name right now, um, but it, it would have required probably four years of education in this healing program. And, and that didn't resonate with me. That did not make me happy. So I just waited. I, I didn't go searching. I had faith. I trusted the universe would bring me exactly what I needed. And one day I go to my mailbox and there is a flyer from a woman named Lori Grant who teaches now a Hawaiian form of energy healing in Hawaii. At least she did. I haven't seen her in a long time. But at the time she was teaching Reiki throughout the world. She was Yusui trained, um, which Dr. Yusui is the person who did bring Reiki to earth most recently. And um, she, she created her own unlimited form of Reiki, which is exactly how I teach Reiki is how she did. So I signed up for her weekend class and she attuned people to all three levels in a weekend. My mother took the class with me um, and I had incredible experiences during that course. So when I got the flyer in the mail, it glowed. I felt happy. This is why people need to learn to practice higher vibrational experiences so that they can identify when the universe is bringing them something. Because you can't feel it if you don't know what high vibration feels like. And most people do not vibrate their energy molecules at a high frequency. So that's what I would do. And I would not spend time researching or any of, don't, all those logical things that you asked, it's not going to happen that way. And the universe will provide the perfect program at the perfect moment for you. I recently signed up for something to help me improve my writing. And as I was looking at it, I was like, because I have a pretty busy schedule. I'm like, oh, that's probably not going to work out in my schedule. It absolutely worked out in my schedule. I was completely shocked. <laughs> so follow the joy. Wait for the joy to come. It will be there. I'm excited for you. Congratulations. Hi, Marie. I'm really glad that I found your podcast. My name is Deb McGinty, 
and I live in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, right now, I'm surviving <laughs> stage four ovarian cancer, which was originally diagnosed in March of 2021. Uh, as you may or may not know, it's very, it's a highly deadly disease and it has very poor outcomes with most people. So initially on treatment, um, when I was going through my treatment, my chemo and my huge surgery, I received chronic healing three to four times a week. And I had a Reiki master working on me as well. And it really made a huge difference. Like the surgery was fantastic. My response to chemo was wonderful. And I really had a very good uh, couple of years after that. Um, right now I've had a relapse and I have three small spots by my liver that they think I just might need maybe three rounds of chemo. And then they'll check with a CT scan and see where we go from there. Uh, but because of the energy healing, I was sold and I started studying Reiki and I became a Reiki, Reiki master. I'm already a nurse. I've been a nurse for 38 years, so I'm definitely on a healing path. And I'm also on a very spiritual path since about the age of 35. I'm 58 now. Um, my belief, this could be wrong, you can let me know, but my belief is that that I chose this lifetime and I chose a body with a BRCA1 mutation. Um, and I think I did that in order to show other people that the best way to deal with cancer and terrible uh, medical issues is positivity. And I want to show that energy can heal us or can make a huge difference in healing us. Um, I guess my question for you is, can my DNA mutation be energetically tweaked somehow to, in, to recognize and kill the cancer cells? Great question. Great question. Because what's missing is the ability to kill cancer cells. And so they grow out of control. Um, and I'm trying to do a lot of Reiki with other help to reduce my side effects. I just would like your thoughts. Thank you so much for helping me. Have a great day. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry for everything that you're going through. You are a trooper, by the way. And I'm very glad you had the surgery and those first rounds of chemotherapy. And sometimes chemo actually really, really works for some people. And when something's kind of aggressive, it could be you know, one of the loveliest things to happen. I have a couple ideas. First of all, I want to share that um, second chakra health issues, which ovarian anything is related to the second chakra is about repressed anger. So how often do you let yourself get angry, throw pillows across the room, scream, yell? I would imagine you've had more of those since the diagnosis. Um, but it's, this is something you really want to allow yourself to have often for the rest of um, your life, your long life here on earth, because, um, you're too nice. You're too kind. You're an excellent person. You've been an excellent nurse. Everything about you is top notch. You're a perfectionist really. And I thank you for all of that. But that also be, can, can be driven from um, not wanting to make a mistake, feeling shamed by other people in your previous experiences. Um, I'm going to suggest several things and you're going to have to investigate. So now I'm talking about doing a little bit of research. I'd almost prefer that you find a different form of chemotherapy. I don't want you to have straight chemo and you get to do whatever you feel is right. Seriously. I just, the body, you know, can only take so much chemo in my mind. Um, and you did so well the first time, but there's, there's different practitioners who different do different things. Of course, I live in Washington state where we have a lot of unique, um, practitioners, oncologists even who do alternative forms. And I'm sure they're everywhere around the United States. It just may not be as obvious, may not be talked about. So, um, and there's even natural paths that are certified in oncology, but I, I'd love for, if you're going to do chemo, which I think you will, um, I would prefer that you do a lesser version of it. There's even some research about doing insulin 
because they say that cancer cells um, will absorb the insulin and then they take the chemo in faster. So there's some more not so mainstream oncologists that use that type of healing as well. But I'd like for you to start looking for non-mainstream. And if you write into energyintuitive.com, I will give you some um, references that you could go look at some certain type of people. They might have suggestions for you um, or know someone in your area or something like that. And then I'm a little bit on the fence of this one suggestion. I'm working on your genes as we're talking right now, but I don't want you to think about that. There are lots of people who have the BRCA gene who will never get cancer ever. So uh, you can look at it from this way, but I want you to look at it that your, your being really wants you to screw up and play and be silly and have fun. The second chakra is all about joy, 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 joy. Not being hard on oneself, not being a perfectionist, not being um, rigid in their decision-making. It's about joy, which is playfulness and silliness and screwing up and having fun. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant. I don't offer this idea to uh, clients who have cancer just because we don't know. We, we just don't know. But I want you to do some research with near-infrared and red light therapy, like from platinum therapy. Um, you're going to have to find some experts, maybe even call platinum therapy and see what they say. But I really feel like you need some light in your body. We just don't want to feed the cancer with light. So that's why I don't always recommend uh, platinum therapy for people who are dealing with cancer because we, we don't know. And my intuition is because I've had nursing history, I'm just more cautious, right? But it came up when I was looking at you. Your mitochondria are exhausted in your body. I think that's actually the problem. Your mitochondria are toast. I think you worked too long, you worked too hard, you didn't have enough sabbaticals, you didn't rest enough, and you've been too hard on yourself. So what I love is near-infrared and red light therapy mixed, like um, some of these companies mix it in their um, products and, and then you deliver it through the, these little lasers. It feeds the mitochondria. That's what we need. We need your mitochondria to be fed so that your ATP increases so that your immune system gets happier. That's what I think. That's what I think would be best. And um, finding a different, uh, I like your oncologist. I love your whole medical team. They're super kind, but find people who have more alternatives. Like, so you get IV vitamin C and things of that nature. So those are my ideas. I'm not worried about, about that gene, quite frankly. Um, I'm sure that we have scores of people because we don't check for that gene on everyone. It's not about that in my opinion. It's about the mitochondria. We need to get them healthier and happier and energized. Okay, thank you. And I wish you the greatest of healing and happiness in your life. Thank you. Hi, Marie. This is Shanda from Cincinnati. Um, I'm pretty new at this, so I'm still learning, um, but I've always had a way of knowing. I've always trusted my instincts. I know it's a little bit more than intuition. My problem is when I'm med meditating and I'm trying to connect to spirit and I'm asking questions, I feel like I already know the answers before I'm asking them. So... I don't know. I'm thinking, so what is the point of asking if I already know the answer? Yeah. And how do I discern what is my voice or what is spirit voice? And am I on the right track? Thank you. Hi, Chandra. Another really good question that I think another billion or so people would love to have the answer to. So as an intuitive and as, as a psychic, you could get the information really quick. That's called knowingness when it happens. When I was learning Reiki and we did meditation every day in the class, it was beautiful. I also teach that way. I would have experiences before the teacher um, directed us in, way before she directed us. But luckily she said, as she, you know, gave us the the direction for meditation that that could happen. So it's not unusual to have knowingness. That, like the universe already knows everything that you want. We're learning to ask questions so we can get out of our ego and our fear and get the information that we need. But to answer your question, the other question, how do you know the difference is intuition is calm, it's compassionate, and it's surprising. So for me, 
when I'm getting intuitive information and I get into intuitive information very quickly as well. Um, if my mind understands it and my mind is 100% in agreement with it, I don't believe it's intuition. My mind is always surprised. So you need to know the difference between authentically feeling your emotions. And that's Charles in the background. <laughs> Have you been in here for a while? You need a walk soon? Um, you need to be able to uh, feel, you, you have to know what, what your real feelings feel like. And real emotions can be felt while you rest in the lower half of your body, connecting to the emotional response system. That's actually what you need to learn to do so that you can tell the difference between your mind and your emotional response system. I teach that in every class. There's videos on my YouTube channel for that. Um, it's critical. It's what my spirit guides taught me very early on in my awakening so that I could become um, aligned with my awareness. So that's, that's what you need to, to learn. And, and I wish you great luck in it. Hi, Marie. My name is Lynn. Thank you so much for all that you do. I really enjoy listening to your podcast. Um, my question relates to my higher power, my soul, um, the true spirit that I am. How do I get to know who my soul is? Um, I certainly feel like I am a soul in a human body. I know who my human is as it relates to what I do, who I am, uh, my values, my morals. But I want to know my soul. I, I want to know the true essence of my soul. Uh, if you could give me any help or guidance in how I go about, um, I do connect with my higher power every day. I do walk as if I am a soul in a human body. I try to live my life that way. Um, I choose to be happy every day. I recognize that I'm here to experience and to grow and to expand. But I'd like to know the, the actual essence of, of who I am in the soul world. Um, I, I can't seem to tap into that. Any help is appreciated. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Hi, Lynn. That's a really great question. So there's an exercise that you can do. That's extremely helpful. And what you do is you erase everything that you identify with. So you, you meditate, you close your eyes and do whatever practices you do. I like to encourage my students to rotate their eyeballs up in their head as if they're looking into their eyebrows or the ceiling above them and take several breaths. That's an old medical form of self-hypnosis and helps us to get into the subconscious. So do that or whatever your practice is. And then I want you to start to say to yourself, and you can say it out loud, what if I'm not a woman? What if I'm not in human form? What if I'm not whatever uh, other identifying factors you are, your job, your relationships? What if I'm not married? What if I don't have children? What if I don't have grandchildren? I don't know what all the things that you identify. So for me, I, what if I'm not an energy healer? What if I'm not a psychic? So you in this meditation, because that's the soul is so much more than anything we could possibly imagine. And it doesn't have those values that humans have. I, I'm not saying that souls are criminals or anything like that, but they unconditionally love everyone and understand why everyone does what they do or don't do. So we have to kind of eradicate the human perception of what's a good person and, and, and who we are. You really want to get away from these identifications. One of the things that I love about energy work, I like to think that I don't know what I'm doing that I am not 100% sure about anything. I, I like to be like a blank canvas. I think that's critical and important. So I would recommend that type of meditation. And I think you're going to start to feel your essence right away. Okay. Hi, Marie. This is Betsy. Um, I'm very excited to be doing this. I have been listening to you for years. Mm. I've been over in the Middle East for the last 15 years. And I often tried to get in touch with you by calling when you, people could call in, but I was never lucky. So this is exciting that I can then I can do this now. Um, I'm now back in the States 
and um, just looking for a general reading about myself, um, my health. Um, I'm now back starting a new phase in my life. I'm retired, not retired, but retired from working in the Middle East. Um, and I'm here and I just thought maybe you could give me a general reading, spirit guides, things like that. Um, just excited to hear your voice. So thanks for everything and hopefully I'll get on. Bye. Hi, Betsy. And thank you for being um, a loyal participant in this lovely awareness dance that we do as often as we can. And welcome home. I hope you enjoyed yourself overseas and learned great cultures and ate great food. I'm sure you did. Um, I personally think Middle Eastern food is, wow, the bomb, really delicious. So I just drew out your energy really, really quickly. It actually looks, looks really good. You must have missed home, although you are a little ungrounded because you were living in one culture or maybe multiple cultures, and now you're you're in a, a kind of a no culture place. <laughs> Luckily, we have so many people from around the world that live in the U.S. that we can identify with certain cultures if we need to. But we kind of don't have one, at least in my opinion, in the U.S. or just the way I was raised. Um, it's kind of a free for all. But other than the root chakra, your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your sixth and your seventh, they're all taking in energy. And in fact, your sixth vortex has beautiful grid lines in it. So you're super intuitive. I hope that in your retirement that you're considering working in the multisensory world, because I think you have those abilities. We all have them, but some people have them because they want to work professionally. It's a desire that they have and that yours is lovely. So I would, you know, walk out on the morning dew and let um, yourself get grounded. I would remind your body that yes, we moved, but this is where we live now. So we can ground here and connect. It's not as exciting, perhaps there isn't, you know, cool dancing happening everywhere and beautiful colors and different languages, unless you live in a part of the country where there's a lot of diversity. Seattle happens to have a lot of diversity, which I'm grateful for. I hear different languages every single day. No matter where I go, there's many, many languages being spoken. So I love that. Um, so yeah, your energy looks great. And I'm excited for your retirement and what you're going to do in the world. And welcome home. Hi there. My name is Lexis. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm a new listener. I saw you on Alex Ferrari's podcast, probably like everyone else. And um, <laughs> I just find your you and your podcast to be refreshing and um, full of energy. And um, I just want to keep listening. So I was just interested in uh, anything my higher self or guides or loved ones might have for me, any advice, um, any guidance in my life, that would be great. Um, and uh, thank you so much for all you do and for taking the time to listen. Thanks. Thank you, Alexis. And yeah, Alex Rory is a gem. He's a very lovely human being. I love to work with his followers, his listeners. He, he does a great job in the world. Um, your vibration is such at a high place. Like, congratulations. I don't know if you're like this all the time or you've been working on it, but your vibration is really high. So now's the time to actively manifest. And no, you do not need to know what you want to manifest. A lot of gratitude. Thank you, universe, for my incredible life, relationship, career, wealth. I want you to start using language like that and, and hold the energy, which means let it stretch out longer. So let's say you're saying a beautiful prayer about something that you want and you're thinking the universe for it as if it's already here. Uh, you might feel that for a couple, for like 30 seconds, but I want you to stretch it out to a couple minutes. I want you to calibrate your energy with this high vibration that you've harnessed so beautifully. Alexis, it's really beautiful so that you can start using it in your life more effectively. This is what everyone needs to do. We have moments in life where our vibration is higher and we need to practice and hold that frequency longer. Whenever I get happy about anything, I try to stretch it out as much as I can so that my body will calibrate into that vibration so I can have access to that frequency as much as possible. So you are in a high, high, high manifesting ability right now. So again, you don't have to know what, what you want. We know you want to be happy, fulfilled. Um, and so, so the universe actually knows what will create those things for you. So you just have a lot of gratitude. Thank you for my amazing love life. Thank you for my amazing wealth. Thank you for my incredible career or whatever it is that you want, health, whatever it is that you want and stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. 
not uncomfortably. I mean, it's a little uncomfortable as we, we calibrate our subatomic particles to vibrate at higher frequencies. But yeah, you're in a great place, Alexis. Um, thank you for calling in. And thank you, everyone, for listening to this podcast. Um, I have classes starting in this month towards the end. One is about the soul's journey. It's an eight-week course. And the other is about vibration manifesting frequency. Um, and I teach all of my tools and all of my classes and all of my classes are live, but they are recorded. So if you miss one, you can listen to it. I answer questions in classes and I encourage breakout room activities so people can practice what we're learning until next time. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.